Hey there, I'm Meg and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create subscribe forms on Flowdesk and e-newsletter software. If you haven't already created your Flowdesk account, be sure to use code MissMegabug at checkout to receive 50% off your monthly subscription for life. Okay, let's get to it. We are going to head on over to Flowdesk. Once I shrink myself, there we go. You're going to log in and you're going to be brought to this section. Now, let's say you haven't created an email before. Stay tuned. I will be creating a tutorial on how to design your first email on Flowdesk. This is part of a getting started with Flowdesk series. So I've linked to all the videos down below. All right. So in order to create a form, you're going to click on forms. Now, these forms will be embedded on your website. So this is how people get on your email list. They go to your website, they fill out one of these forms, and they're automatically added to your email list. And if you've checked out my first Getting Started with Flowdesk video, you've learned how to set up the double opt-in, which means that once somebody subscribes to your form, they're going to automatically be sent an email that has them confirm that they really mean it, that they really want to be on your email. So that follows the GDPR policy of requiring double opt-in. So again, that video is linked down below if you have no idea what I'm talking about or if you have no idea how to set up double opt-in. Okay, so here on forms, I'm going to show you some of my forms just to give you an idea of what the options are. So we have pop-ups and pop-ups pop up on your website. So you can have it set that they pop up after somebody scrolls a certain amount on your website or after 10 seconds or so. So once either of those happens, this little window pops up and it covers your entire website and people can either X out, you can kind of see it in the corner here, or they can subscribe here. And then another form type is called an inline form, which literally lives on your website. So it doesn't pop up, it doesn't go away. I'm gonna show you how that looks. I have a couple of different types of inline forms on my website. So we're gonna scroll on down to the footer. So this is one of them. And then on my freebies page, I have a couple of simpler ones. So I do organize my forms because I have a lot of forms. I have four pages of forms. So I organize them in folders and I will have a video coming of how to organize your Flowdesk account, which shows you how to do this. So I have my footer forms, which you can barely see because the text is white. So it shows up on my footer and then the freebie page forms, which are super simple. And then I also have landing pages for each of my freebies. So you can see that these forms have a little bit more information than these forms. So that's the basic structure of a form. So let's make one. So back here on my forms, what you're going to do is you're going to click new form here. Pretty straightforward, right? And then this is where you choose the different form types. And there is a third form type. I haven't used this one yet. I've used this in the past, but I haven't used it on Flowdesk because I'm pretty happy with my inline forms. But full page is basically a full page that you can link to. So it would be its own URL. So let's say that you wanted to share a link with somebody to subscribe to your e-newsletter list. You would just send them to the link that is attached to here. So when you click on any of these, you can see there's a few different templates for pop-up, inline, and full page. Full page only has one template. So let's say that we want to do a pop-up. We're going to start with pop-up. So these are our two different options. This one had a little more pizzazz, so we're going to click customize it. And the first thing you're going to want to do is choose which segment, also known as a list, that you want people to be added to when they fill out the form on this pop-up. At this time, you cannot have people added to multiple lists. So you're going to choose that segment and click Save. And then you just go ahead and customize it. You can click on the photo and you can upload an image. You can click here and you can swap out the text. You can also highlight the text and you can change the font and then you can change the font color. And if you've added your brand colors, 
they'll show up right here super easy if you haven't done that yet if you have no idea how to do that check my first getting started video linked down below you can also change the alignment same as with the section and then this is a button so click here and this is where you change the text and if you want to change the font you have to click on font here also a super snazzy thing with font if you click spacing you can space out the letters and then if you have multiple lines like a paragraph you can space out the line height so it's the the gap in between the lines and then back on the button you can change the the color here and then you can also change the look of the button which is pretty cool so additional form settings can be found here so this is the background color of the form which is this right here whoops nope i'm mistaken it's this so when this pop-up pops up your website will be covered by this pink if you don't want your website to be covered if you still want people to see what your website is just to kind of confirm that they're still on your website click this here and whatever is back here is going to show so your website will show up back here and then the canvas color is what i thought i was talking about that's this here okay yep there we go <laughs> and then you can also change the opacity back here so let's say that you do have a color here if you want your website to kind of poke through you can change how opaque it is so this is pretty transparent so you can you know see clearly your website if you don't want people to see your website at all then you just do drink drag the slider all the way over here okay so note that on this there's not a way to add first and last name here unfortunately so once your form is to your liking we're going to click next and then this is where you set up double opt-in so we're going to click yes and then if you want to customize your opt-in message here's a little shortcut to get there now we're going to click continue this is how you choose when your pop-up displays so as soon as somebody hits your website do you want the pop-up to show up immediately do you want the pop-up to show up after 10 seconds, after 30 seconds, or when a visitor scrolls 30% of your website? I like 10 seconds. So we're going to click 10 seconds. Click continue. And then this is a super handy feature. You don't want to aggravate people who have already signed up for your list. So we're going to click now. So what this means is as soon as they sign up for your list, they're never going to be bothered by that pop-up again. Super handy. And then I always like to not be notified because if you have hundreds of people signing up for your list, you're going to get hundreds of emails notifying you that they signed up for your list and you don't need that. And then after they fill out, after the subscriber fills out that form, you can either display a success message, which is thank you for signing up for my email list. Or you can redirect to a URL so you can redirect to a different page on your website if you'd like. I usually display the success message. We're going to click continue. And then this is how you add the code to your website. So how you add the pop-up to your website. It's really simple. You click copy and then you're going to want to add this to the header code on your website. So in order to find that, Let's say you use Squarespace, Google Squarespace, add flow desk code or something like that. Just, you know, Squarespace header code and that'll help you find a tutorial. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our forms and you can see the beautifully cacophonic form that we have just made. And let's say that we want to create an inline form. We're going to follow the same process. I'm going to click inline. And you'll notice that there are definite differences between these types of forms. I, my favorite one, 
are these two. Let's say we want to go with, um, yeah, let's do this one. So again, same process. And now this is where we adjust. You can adjust the font on your name fields and you can adjust the color. You can change it to all caps if you'd like. And then this is where you change the font. And then this is the form settings. So let's say that you are creating this inline form to go in the footer of your website and the footer of your website is a color like mine. You're going to want to make every single element on that form white. So you're going to want to make everything here, all the text, everything white, except nope. Yep. You're going to want to make everything white. And then what's cool is you can also click and you can see how this form looks on mobile and desktop. We're going to click next. And again, these are the same settings as for the pop-up, except we're not going to have when should I display the pop-up because this is going to live on your website. It's always, this inline form is always going to be where you plop it. And this is where you copy the code. And again, I recommend finding a tutorial on how to do this. So we're going to go back and we're not going to make the, you know what? Yeah, we will. We'll do it. We're going to make a full page opt-in. And again, there's only one template here. We're going to go through the process. You're going to edit your form. And again, these are form settings and we're going to click next. Yes. Continue. Do not notify me. Continue. We'll redirect to a URL. This is how you do that. So this is different than the other forms because the other forms had code. So the forms were embedded on your website. This one you copy and you just share this link. And this is how it looks. So you'll notice that this link is not tied to your website. So this is one of the reasons why I don't like using this type of form because I want people to stay on my website. So even if this opens as a new window, people are still getting pulled away from my website. So what I do instead is I have a page on my website with a inline form embedded on it. And I have it as missmegabug.com slash emailsletter subscribe or something like that. So that's the link that I share. So I use that link in my, um, my email footer. And if I ever, like if somebody says, oh, hey, how do I sign up for your email newsletter, I just send them that link. But if you don't have time to get to that or you don't want to deal with getting to that, this works just fine. So it's just this link here. Just that link there. And that is it. So that is how you create forms on Flowdesk. I hope it helped. Stay tuned for the next video in the series, which is how to create your first email. And then I'll also be doing a video on how to create a workflow and then later on how to organize your Flowdesk account, including how to rename your forms. So if you are looking to dive even deeper into email marketing, including how to get people on your list and what to send to them once you have them, check out my online mini course, Expand with Email. I hope this tutorial helped and I will see you in the next one.